Good morning. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm going to talk about acute ischemic stroke and neurosurgical disease. So, uh, brief background on stroke, I think, is familiar to everyone here. Most prevalent neurologic condition, most common discharge in nursing home, most common diagnosis, treated in rehab, and it's the leading cause of adult disability with an indirect and direct cost exceeding $60 billion a year. <clears throat> so, um, Currently, there are over 800,000 strokes a year in this country, and as you can see here, the number is, is only on, on the rise. So um, we, we heard a lot about kind of traditional neurosurgery disease this morning. So as neurosurgeons, we think about aneurysms, subarachnoid hemorrhage, 30,000 you know, new cases a year, brain tumor, 18,000 cases. We heard about AVM rupture, you know, dural fistulas, and even trauma, traumatic brain injury, 600,000 cases a year. So if you look at the Incidence of stroke, we just talked about over 800,000 cases a year. So that in itself is more than all the other kind of cranial traditional neurosurgery disease combined. So I think, you know, as neurosurgeons, we want to make a big, big impact uh, on patient care. We really cannot ignore stroke. So, you know, I mean, <clears throat> as neurosurgeons, you know, historically we think about, you know, like endotorectomies and, and bypass, you know, for moya moya. But I think the, the intervention at that point is way too downstream. The stroke has happened, the blood is spilled. I mean, here we're talking about secondary prevention for stroke. I think today, you know, we have different tools and different technology that really allows us to intervene at the time of the stroke and try to minimize uh, the, the, uh, the damage. So we'll kind of go into these, these technologies. <clears throat> so currently, these are the uh, endovascular IA therapies with 510K clearance from the FDA. So Mercy is kind of like a real archaic device. I don't think anyone even carries this device on the shelf anymore. And the uh, free workhorse is really Penumbra, um, Solitaire, and, and Trentrivo. And I'll go into some details of each one of these and give some case examples. So start with Penumbra. So the idea of Penumbra is basically like a vacuum. It's a catheter that, that aspirate clot. So fairly simple concept. Nothing, you know, it's nothing new, but really it's the evolution of these flexible catheters that I think makes, makes this technique um, um, kind of, kind of uh, more, more, more efficient and, uh, and more uh, efficacious. So when I was a fellow not too long ago, we have these kind of stiff 054 catheters, pretty hard to track to the MCA, but since then, they have these 5MAX and now the 5MAX ACE catheter, which I think really has changed, changed what we do quite a bit. So again, a new catheter. It's basically like a six French distal ID catheter that you can track reliably into the MCA. Um, so again, designed to kind of remove clot intact. As you can see here, I sucked the whole clot in without fragmentation because the uh, previous iteration of these separators that kind of fragment the, the clot to, to help um, clean, the, clean the catheter. But these newer catheters basically remove the clot intact without fragmentation, has advanced tracking, again, um, big catheter to the middle cerebral artery. So the technique um, is known as the DAP, pretty, pretty, well, pretty well known among, among all, all of us who, who do it, direct aspiration first pass technique. This is a paper, you know, um, 100 uh, cases, six institution. The technique is actually pretty simple. You just basically put the catheter proximal to the clot and you hook up to a pump and you aspirate for about 20 seconds. And uh, <clears throat> in this paper, you know, this technique alone works about 80% of the time to get what we call ticky 2 b a three result. So ticky 2 b is when you revascularize over half of the arterial territory, and ticky 3 is basically a complete perfect revascularization of an average time of 32 minutes. So pretty, pretty, good, pretty good overall results. So far, I'll just show some cases uh, of my own. So this is a patient, a uh, 58-year-old guy, uh, came in, M1 occlusion, four hours, best contraindication IV TPA. So here, we have M MC occlusion. I'm just going to see if we can play the video here. So this is basically a microwire, uh, philosophy microcatheter. And, <laughs> and the purpose of the video is just to show this 5 max ace catheter, see how easy it is now to track to the, to the middle cerebral artery. just want to see if I can play it. <laughs> I'm sorry. So again, tracking the catheter into the MCA, <coughs> proximal to the clot, aspiration, and here the vessel reopened. <coughs> Sorry. And this is what the clot looks like intact in all the catheter. <coughs> so a similar case, I'll, I'll skip this case for the sake of time. But just to show that, 
it is a triaxial axis. We have a guide catheter um, and the petrous carotid, then the five max ace catheter over the velocity catheter, uh, gain aspiration, um, the clot comes out and the vessels reopen. So this case, a case of ICA terminus, a similar concept, proximal to a clot, aspiration. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> um, the IC terminus is reopened here. The clot here. I just want to show this case to show how flexible these catheters are. So this is the patient's cervical carotid. has basically two loops to it. And with these new flexible catheters, we can really even navigate these tortuosities going to the supraclinal IC to the ICA terminus. <clears throat> I think another uh, place where aspiration is useful is when you have a big clot burden. So this is a case uh, cervical IC occlusion. So patient got IV TPA really has a limited chance of success because of the large vessel occlusion and the clot burden. Uh, here, because there's a calcium at the, um, at the IC takeoff, so I thought I'd try across then and see if I can get lucky and reopen the vessel. So here, I put a carotid wall stand here. Still has a lot of clot beyond, beyond the stand here. So in this case, I just took the 5 max ace catheter and started aspirating. And um, actually, to my surprise, you know, every time I aspirate, the catheter got plugged, clean it out, put it up again, and, and just basically keep going up. Here you can see the, into the cavernous segment already, into the middle cerebral ACA, and here into the MCA. And here we kind of pull out four tubes of clot. And uh, another case here, um, cervical ICA occlusion, failed TPA. This is the Neuromax guy catheter. In this case here, I just used the um, guy catheter and aspirate, and the vessel here reopened. Here we can still see a distal A2 occlusion, but certainly the vessel is not, it's a lot better than what it was before. Uh, one last case on aspiration uh, in venous um, stroke. This is a case I did uh, about two weeks ago. 23-year-old woman, known multiple PE, sadder sinus thrombosis outside hospital, treated on IV heparin, and she had a kind of like a rapid decline despite therapeutic anticoagulation. Here you can see the hemorrhagic venous infarct. Uh, MRV showing the anterior two-thirds sinus is, uh, is basically completely out. Venous face of a carotid, internal carotid injection confirming the information. And here one transvenous, um, again a neuron max catheter here, five max ace catheter, a, uh, I think a free, free fly glide wire. And again, just with aspiration alone here, I was able to reestablish fairly good flow into the, into the sinus. This is the clot that came out with it. So um, basically a summary slide of um, aspiration. I think, you know, it's good for selective cases. I mean, it, when it works, it's pretty fast, pretty efficient. Fairly simple, you put the catheter proximal to the clot and you aspirate. <coughs> As you can see in some of these slices, um, it removes a lot, large piece of clot intact with fragmentation. And I think if it doesn't work, <clears throat> it doesn't take away other options. You can still do stent retriever, which we'll show later on. <clears throat> Fairly cost effective, can potentially save the use of separators and stent retrievers. <clears throat> so, um, we're ha halfway there, so, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> so uh, solitaire is a um, stent retriever. So the concept of stent retriever is a little bit different. Here, <coughs> we basically deploy the stent across the clot. So the concept, thanks, Dr. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So, um, thanks, Earl. It's a lot better. So, the first technique we show is a large bore catheter aspiration. So, stent retriever is a pretty, pretty simple concept. You basically deploy the stent across the clot, so the clot is integrated within the stent, so you get immediate kind of flow restoration. And then you kind of pull the stent and the clot out, and uh, so you basically spare the patient aspirin plavix and, and, the, and you don't have to commit the patient to a stent. So, uh, SWIFT is a study that um, a solitaire stent 510K clearance, basically comparing solitaire to, to the old mercy device, showing that solitaire has better recanalization rate, um, 80% TIMI 2-3 versus 30% um, with mercy, and again, better neurologic outcome, 58% uh, with solitaire versus 33% with mercy. <clears throat> so this is a case here, a 38-year-old woman, <clears throat> uh, high night stroke scale after PFO closure, um, CTA inferior MCA branch occlusion, so there are two ways to do this, and I think there's a lot of debate in terms of how to do it in the, in the meeting. So I'll, so I'll show a case of, of each, um, each technique. So the first case, uh, this case we did the triaxial technique, basically has a shuttle guide catheter in the neck, uh, intermediate catheter, 5-max ace catheter in the MCA, 
and then a microcatheter to, to deploy the, uh, uh, the stent retriever. So they call this a Slumber technique because it's a penumbra add, adding to the solitaire technique. So here, a microcatheter crossing the lesion uh, run showing that we're in the, in the vessel itself, hasn't perforated the vessel. So we kind of leave the 5 max ace catheter over the microcatheter, deploy the stent um, uh, from the velocity microcatheter, and here we basically local aspiration and pull the stent trigger into the, into the large ball catheter and got the vessel reopened. Like I personally think this technique is, is, is a nice technique because it basically maintains the access. You know, if it doesn't work, you can put it up for a second try. And also you kind of go beyond the, the ACA and the PCOM so you kind of avoid the distal, distal embolization. So this is the case is done the other way, the balloon guy catheter. So basically here, uh, MC occlusion, um, 70 year old high night stroke scale. So here we use the balloon guide catheter, basically flow arrest in the cervical ICA uh, with aspiration and, and we even pull the catheter. Again, micro catheter running showing this to the occlusion. So this is the stent, the distal stent tennis solitaire that we saw on the, on the first slide, and this is the proximal, proximal um, part of the device. So again, the concept of immediate flow restoration. So after the stent is deployed, you see flow across the clot into the MCA. And here, basically, you pull the stand all the way down to the neck under flow arrest and, uh, and, um, and, um, and aspiration, manual aspiration. And it worked, it worked very well. So I want to show um, uh, two cases of vaso occlusion. Um, so typically, because of the alternative is, is, is pretty devastating, we, most of us would extend the window. Like I personally do up to 24 hours, you know, if the patient um, has a decent, decent and, and uh, reasonable MRI. So 50-year-old guy, an age of 18, vaso occlusion here. So this, we, we did a uh, coaxial access, uh, basically choose one PCA first to get into, uh, microcatheter run. Again, solitaire stand, the three tines here, proximal stand, and immediate flow restoration to the left PCA here. And on single pull, fortunately, we opened up vaso apex and both PCAs still have a left-sided SC occlusion. but. Um, um, but we just left it that for that particular case. Now this case, I, I kind of want to call me and say like, you gotta be kidding me, but I just want to show this case to show sometimes you just never know. This patient is 95 years old, probably the oldest person I've ever done a stroke intervention on, and they call me 4.30 in the morning. And to make it worse, it's a wake up stroke. So time of onset is not really known for this particular patient. High neck stroke scale, basal occlusion, they say, well, 95 year old guys, probably there's not much to do. Now, but the only thing is that they got the MRI, and the MRI in this patient is actually not so bad. It just has some kind of uh, cerebellar peduncle, cerebellar kind of strokes, and some thalamic infarct. So the stroke burden is not, as, I mean, it's not terrible. So I thought I'd give it a try, you know, uh, with that triaxial system here. That's kind of how I do these strokes these days with the basilar. So I have a neuron max and the subclavian, four max into the, um, into the basilar, and philosophy into the, one of the PCAs, then I deploy a stand retriever. So here, again, we pick the right PCA first, reopen, you know, the right PCA, then we go into the left PCA, you know, the um, four max calf in the basilar, direct aspiration, retrieval, and here we still have a, uh, an occlusion beyond P2. And this patient, <laughs> surprisingly, she came in essentially in a coma, and, and after a week or so, she actually went to rehab with a few cuts. I think sometimes you just, you just never know, and I think a, some of these patients with basilar occlusion deserves, deserves a chance. So very quickly, the last five minutes, uh, Trevo. So Trevo is uh, similar technology as Solitaire. The uh, cell tines are a little bit different. The cell geometry are a little different. This is the older version, and I'll show a case of the older and, and the new one. So the distal tip on the newer version now is, is gone, basically. The similar idea, basically deploying the stand across the clot and retrieving it, and then negating the, the commitment of a patient to aspirin plavix in the setting of an acute stroke. So similar to SWIFT, uh, Trevo 2 is a study that gained 510K clearance for, for Trevo, again, showing Trevo is better than Mercy. Uh, for both revascularization and also for neurologic outcome in three months. So I, so I want to show a little bit more detail in this case, just to highlight some of the thought process behind acute strokes. So this is a young patient, two and a half hours out um, from a stroke, um, basically high night stroke scale. My personal cutoff is a nine, any, anything above a nine, like I, like I would consider intervening because of, uh, uh, of the high, high stroke burden. And two and a half hours out, so well within the IVTPA window, I think if there's no contraindication, it's certainly standard of care to give IVTPA. Um, the patient in this case did not, did not get better, got a pretty significant headache afterwards, so you always got to think about the 5% risk of, of hemorrhage after IVTPA. So basically, every, anyone who got IVTPA before intervention, I, I get a quick CAT scan on the way up to the angel suite just to make sure they don't have hemorrhage, because if they have hemorrhage, then I, then I don't, obviously I don't, I don't do anything at that point. 
So in this case here, the patient head CT was pretty clean, no hemorrhage and no obvious hypodensity, got a good aspect score. There's a hyperdense MCA sign suggestive of a right MCA occlusion. So CT perfusion, again, showing a, um, showing a, a good penumbra in the right MCA distribution. So basically, the, the, uh, the, the cerebral blood volume is preserved, showing there's good collaterals, but the flow is down because of the large vessel occlusion we see here on the CT angiogram. So this is an older case. I think in this case, probably did as a, as a fellow. So proximal uh, uh, MCA occlusion, the older trivo, so here crossing the lesion, um, microcatheter run. So this is the old, old trivo. You see the, the atraumatic tip here. You can't really see the stent, but the proximal stent is here. And um, here, with a single, single pass, we're able to retrieve, retrieve the clot and uh, had a TQ3 um, flow with, good, with a good uh, capillary blush in this case. Um, so the patient, this is obviously like a poster, poster case. The patient kind of started lifting his arm up um, in the angio suite, you know, the gaze deviation improved, and I draw from 16 to 15 on the table. Uh, a day later, basically has very minor symptoms, completely recoverable symptoms, and two days later, basically became normal. Um, so these cases can happen. They don't happen all the time, but it can happen. So last case here, uh, to show the new retrieval device, 42-year-old, uh, uh, NHL 13, two hours, so got TPA with no improvement. So basically the whole MCA is out here, you can see it. So this is the ADAPT technique that we show. So it doesn't work all the time. You know, in this case, we, we, we aspirate, you know, pro proximally, there's still a huge clot there, even though there's some flow into the distal MCA vessel. And here we just basically put the velocity catheter out, deploy a trivo stent. You see that the, the, um, that this, that this toe tip is gone now, and you can see the stent pretty nicely and, and um, uh, of the device. So here we use the triaxial system, and the vessel is revascularized. So I think, in summary, I think stroke is a, uh, as we saw in these, these slides here, is a very prevalent disease with a large burden of society. And I think now is an exciting time because, you know, the, the positive study for eye therapy is emerging. So recently, we know of at least three, you know, possibly a fourth and fifth trial coming out, you know, that is showing now for the first time some positive data for eye therapy. So I think as endovascular neurosurgeons, we really have a good, you know, now we have good tools as we saw for revascularization, and I think you know we really need to embrace stroke as a neurosurgical disease, just to um, as uh, as part of the disease that we treat. Thank you very much.